The Gospel this week and the most of the next two weeks is taken from Matthew's account of the Sermon on the Mount. It comes near the beginning of his public ministry and offers an overview of the moral and ethical teaching of Jesus. Like other religious figures of the time, Jesus attracted a number of disciples or followers. While some followed him literally as he went about on his preaching ministry, others tried to follow his teaching and example in the way that they lived their lives. Later, after the resurrection and the beginning of the church, Christians were often described and described themselves as disciples or followers of Jesus. The Sermon on the Mount offers a pattern of discipleship. It suggests the kind of attitudes and values and ways of acting that ought to mark the life of a Christian. The sermon begins with the Beatitudes. In them, Jesus praises and declares blessed the humble, the meek, the merciful, those who thirst for justice and goodness, those who work for peace. Such people, he says, are the light of the world, the salt of the earth. Their lives bear witness not only to the goodness of which humans are capable, but also to God's presence in our midst, making it possible for us to live in such ways. In the passage we read yesterday, Jesus has firm, affirmed that he, he has Jesus affirmed that he had not come to abolish the law and the prophets, but to fulfill them. The New Testament emphasis on faith and love is not to be opposed to the moral demands of the Ten Commandments or to the religious and social justice concerns of the prophets. They are rather to be seen as complementing them, as bringing them to fulfillment. In the opening verse of today's reading, Jesus says that unless our righteousness, unless the quality of our moral life exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, we will never enter the kingdom of heaven. He's talking here not only of our future fulfillment in God, but also of our sharing in God's kingdom here and now. Such sharing brings us into friendship with God, the fruit of which is inner peace and joy. More even than the other evangelists, Matthew emphasizes the tensions, conflicts, and confrontations that mark the relationship between Jesus and the Pharisees. His account of such things comes to a climax in chapter 23, where Jesus declares a series of condemnations or woes against them. What he has to say reads like a negative counterpart to the Beatitudes. His basic charge against the Pharisees is that they do not practice what they preach. Not only that, they lay heavy burdens on the conscience of others, but do nothing to help them carry them. Whatever good deeds they do, they do in order to be seen and to win praise. They have a need to be recognized and honored wherever they go. All these things lie behind the charge that Jesus levels more often than any other against the Pharisees, namely, that they are hypocrites. They claim to be moral and religious and to care about others, but in fact are concerned only with themselves. The image of the Pharisees that we find in Matthew's Gospel is clearly one-sided. It is as if for him they represent all that is negative in, religious, in religion and about religious people. They function like a foil for the positive ideal of religious and moral life outlined in the Sermon on the Mount. And so Jesus says the righteousness, the moral life of his disciples must exceed that of the scribes and Pharisees. It must be marked not by hypocrisy, but by honesty and truth, humility and integrity. The ideal of the sermon is not an easy one. 
None of us is capable of living up to it perfectly. Our challenge is to embrace it as well as we can, even as we recognize our limitations. Above all, we must not pretend, even to ourselves, that we are better than we are. The second part of today's reading contains the first of a series of contrast sayings. In each of them, Jesus cites a commandment or moral teaching from the biblical tradition and then in some way adds to it, sharpens it, makes it more demanding. These sayings give us some idea of what Jesus means from a moral point of view when he says that he has come not to abolish but to fulfill the law and the prophets. The first of the sayings has to do with the commandment, you shall not murder. Jesus both reaffirms the traditional teaching and goes beyond it. It is not enough, he says, not to murder. We must avoid becoming angry at and insulting others and calling them names. Murder or doing serious physical harm are things that most of us would not even dream of. The hatred, violence, and cold-bloodedness that are so often involved in such acts are beyond our experience. In challenging us in regard to anger, insults, and name-calling, Jesus reminds us not only that such things are hurtful, but that given the right circumstances, they can lead to far worse. The effort needed to control and contain the impulses that give rise to such feelings and actions can help us discipline our emotions and develop a greater capacity in ourselves for forgiveness and understanding. The emphasis throughout the Sermon on the Mount is on our inner attitudes and dispositions on the quality of our heart. Growth in the moral life comes through good actions and through a kind of gradual inner transformation. We need to become, over time, more merciful and generous, more courageous and disciplined, more aware of others, and sensitive to their needs. The more we do so, the more will we be able to achieve the kind of righteousness or goodness to which we are called as disciples of Jesus. Let us now in faith and trust present before God our needs. For all of us that are sharing in this Eucharist will make us better disciples of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For the intentions of our donors and of those who have asked us to pray for them, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For victims everywhere of violence and abuse, that they will experience healing and peace, let us pray to the Lord. Amen for the working poor and for the unemployed, that they will receive the help they need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our deceased relatives and friends and for all those who have died this past night, that they will be brought to eternal life in God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Gracious God, we ask you to hear and grant these prayers as well as the more personal ones that each one of us has in his or her own heart. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. 